You're listening to Cougar Baseball alongside Tuckett Slade. Here's Brent Norton. Easton Walker will come on for the Cougars as we go to the seventh inning. Easton, one of the starters for BYU in the regular rotation. And he will come on in here in the seventh inning. Easton out of Pleasant Grove High School. Been a great pitcher for the Cougars during his career. Corey number nine is Walker. 5'9", 160, junior year. And brought on here to protect a one-run lead against the Wolverines. Wolverines will have 9-1-2 and two up. Uh, Garrett Broussard will step in, right-handed one, hitter. One thing you can count on with Easton, he's going to throw a lot of strikes. First pitch up high, four ball one. Sometimes he throws too many strikes, and that's why. Uh, <laughs> too much, yeah. 0-2 oh, this year, 6.55 earned run average. He started three games. Throwing 11 innings and giving up 17 hits. That's an awful lot of hits for Easton Walker. You know, he had that crazy streak to start last year with all the scoreless streak. And, uh, you know, he threw really good against Cal Poly. He had a bad matchup against uh, New Mexico. He had two losses against those guys. And that's a good hitting team that just battles, and it wasn't a good matchup for him. Look to get him back on track. One one pitch up high, ball two. Walker has given up uh, in those 11 innings, 10 runs, eight of them earned. Has six strikeouts and uh, just two walks. 2 1 pitch. That's up high for ball three. The last couple innings, we've been flirting with a little disaster defensively because we've been hitting guys and giving up a few walks. You'd like to see them have to earn it. You know, we put up a bunch of zeros in a row after that four run first, but uh, you hate to keep giving them free base runners because sooner or later they're going to come around and score. 3 1 pitch, swing and a miss. 3 and 2. Go at him right here. Walker out of the windup. Here's the pitch. Strike three called inside corner fastball, and Boussard goes down. Yeah, good inside fastball. Just painted the corner there. They're called strike three. They'll bring Connor Hall to the plate. He has a single in the first, struck out in the second, walked in the fifth. All right-handed hitter will step in. And here is Walker's first pitch, and that's over for a strike. Came back with an off-speed there. And caught the outside corner. Oh, one ball foul at the plate. Cougars a staff day today. And we'll see what they end up doing here as they've had to juggle it a little bit from what they had hoped to be able to do. It's pretty close to still being on schedule. Swing and a miss. boy. Good fastball right there. 90 miles an hour. Good to see that out of that arm. That'll bring to the plate uh, Mitch Morales. He's two for three today. Grounded into a double play his last time up. That was a big double play because it was first and second, nobody out. First pitch, swing and a miss for strike one. Easton's out there like he's trying to prove something here tonight. I love it. (laughs) Pitch with an edge. Pitch with a chip on your shoulder. That's the guy we like. Here's the 0-1. Outside ball one. Yeah. 
on one pitch, curveball inside corner for a strike, one and two. Yeah, that's the best he's looked all year, Brent, just confident out there. I mean, he had it going against Cal Poly, but uh, it's good to see him out there just being confident. There's a one, two, just off the plate. And the count evens up at two balls, two strikes. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here's Walker's pitch. Swing, strike three. Strikes out the side here in the seventh. Cougars lead 5-4 over UVU on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball alongside Tuckett Slade. Here's Brent Norton. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh. Cougars up 5-4. Ishmael Valdez will step in. Well, this is a spot Abraham. where you, you'd like to uh, add on here, Brent. No doubt, one run lead, bottom of the seventh. Want to know the count to Valdez. He'll be followed by Watkins and then Cole. Seven, eight, nine. <laughs> the order for the Cougars. And the 1 0 pitch up ball drilled down the left field line, but just fouled. Fouled by about five feet out there in the corner. That dang bathroom runner. Valdez has walked twice and struck out his last time up. Cougars have had some chances. Wolverines have not really done a whole lot since that first inning. And Only left one left. base hit. Less than base runners on. But they have they have done that. Here's the one one to Valdez and it's down low. Cougars two eleven is a team batting average coming into tonight. Slow curveball drops in for a strike. And the count evens up at two and two. Two two pitch. Valdez up the middle, shortstop Atta over, boy. unable to get there. So Abe, first hit of the night, single to lead off the seventh. And that will bring Watkins to the plate. Watkins uh, walked in the second, grounded out in the third, and walked in the fifth. So Watkins will step in, and he fouls that one over near the UVU dugout down the first base side. Petit had a completely fooled at first on that. Leg, leg lift. He went all the way back to the bag. He was standing on first base <laughs> when uh, Brock swung. Cougars will return the visit to UVU on the 22nd of April. Six o'clock game back there. Watkins uh, takes that one up a little bit. One and one the count. Brent, you, uh, you missed out on some fantastic umpiring we saw in New Mexico. I I was going to warn you about that. (laughs) I was. I'm not kidding you. My goodness. In fact, I heard a little of your call and I I just had to laugh. Remember the old days. Lobo Field. Talk about home cooking. Well, I was... uh, Someone had posted on social media somewhere the last time BYU had played at Lobo Field, and I guess there was a brawl or something like that. Oh, yeah. Maybe it was here yeah. or something. No, I mean, was, crazy just stuff crazy. Yeah. I think that was actually here. Yeah, it's crazy. Two balls and a strike. Pitches inside ball three. One of my, it's not my, one of my favorite stories, but one of the crazy stories that happened down there is we were 
playing a doubleheader on a Saturday afternoon, and it was getting dark. It was it was almost unplayable. And uh, Coors were trying to hang on, had a one-run lead, finally put it away. And three one put no, a quick throw to first. And when they put it away, Coach Pullins was on the top of the dugout step and went out to celebrate and tore his Achilles. Oh, wow. I looked over and he was oh, laying no. it flat down. Oh, no. That had a pretty good move over there. So how did he – hopefully there wasn't too many games left in the season. You know, I can't remember, but he was uh, – he had surgery, flew home that night. And just that movement, just from the dugout step onto the field. 3-1 pitch, up high, ball four. All right, we got so something cooking here now. A single and a walk. Cougars with runners at first and second. Peyton Cole, got to believe he'll be bunning here in this situation as uh, Manson, coach for UVU out. And he has not made any kind of move with uh, Cole, the left-hander up there. Not sure if he's decided if he's going to make a move here or not. He's out talking with uh, Pettit. Well, he's got the two lefties in a row that you would, it seems like it's a righty in the pen, so you would yep. like to stick with him to try to get these two guys. He did walk Peyton his – actually, no, Peyton walked from the other pitcher, and then they right. brought this guy in to strike That's out right. Mitch. So. Bottom of the seventh, Cougars leading 5-4. BYU has runners at first and second base. Peyton Cole's going to be the hitter. An extended conference on the mound with it's gonna stick with him. the head coach, and he's going to stay with Pettit here. Over one for two in these situations today. Peyton asked to, to get it down his first time up and wasn't able to, and he struck out. And then Jelich got his down. So Peyton's going to be asked to do it again. First base is playing. He's going to be crashing hard. Just nice, soft, and easy on the third baseline. Make the third baseman come in and field it and move the guys up. Cole steps in. One for two today, and first pitch is fouled. On a bunt attempt and uh, right through the legs of the catcher. But a little uh, tentative on the bunt right there by yeah, he wanted fooled to, on the pitch. He actually. wanted to pull it back, and then he realized, oh, yeah. it's breaking in for a strike, and then it was too late. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly called by you right there. You yeah. did look, look, his eyes, you could see, I oh, know that ball's inside, and then all of a sudden, no, oh, it's coming in. <laughs> yeah, square early and just sacrifice your body. Here we go. Again, squaring to bunt. Now he pulls back and takes a pitch over for a strike. So Cole behind the count, 0-2. Well, you know that breaking ball is coming again or the elevated fastball. Find a way to get a job done right here, Pate. McIntyre on deck, and here is the 0-2. Again, he squares to bunt. And the pitcher stepped off the mound just before delivering the pitch. Oh, and two. Cole takes that pitch outside, showing bunt all the way. Cougars have bunted once in the ball game on a two-strike pitch, and it worked out well for him with Jelich. Well, you know, when you have an offense that's struggling, Coach Littlewood's trying to just do whatever he can, right, to get him going. Agreed. Cole showing bunt again, and here's the one-two, and there's a bunt right in front of the plate. Good. Good bunt by Cole, only played a first base, so the Cougars twice tonight have bunted with two strikes. Moves the runners up. Well, hey, you don't see that. You don't see that that often. No, you, you see don't. it twice in one game. But hey, a two for two. Maybe we should just go up there with the mindset that on first <laughs> pitch it's 0-2, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, that's the big spot here now. Mitch struck out last time in this spot. And you got the infield playing in. This is the best time to hit if you're a hitter. Infield's in, less than two. Just see a ball elevated here, Brent, 
and put a good swing on it and, yeah. and hit, a, hit a sack fly in the outfield or a hard line drive, and you're going to score a run, if not two. Mitch has just had a hard time making contact. Yeah, he struggled. Both, you know, the three strikeouts and swinging through a lot of pitches. What a great opportunity right here, though, for the center fielder. And he squares the bunt, takes the pitch outside. Yeah, coach called a little, it's called a safety, safety squeeze. squeeze right there. Valdez, not great speed at third base. I think maybe he just called that to put it in the mind, yeah, of, put it in the the mind of their infield. Yeah. And maybe the pitcher's like, oh, I'll give him a pitch to bunt. See if he can turn on something here. Come on, Mitch. Want to know the count. Here's the pitch to. McIntyre, and that is a fastball on the outside corner for a strike. But when you're struggling, that ball looks about the size of a pea coming yes, up it there. Does. It's just tough. Yes, it does. That's Other a, times, it's just the opposite. It's a ball right there that, man, 85 miles an hour on the black. Put a swing on that thing. Here is the 1-1 one, one to McIntyre. Swing and a miss. 1-2. and two. Just not picking up that uh, curveball here tonight. One ball, two strikes. McIntyre again steps back in. And here is Pettit's pitch. That's down low. Two and two the count. Well, you know he's coming breaking ball right here. Everyone he's thrown, you haven't come close to hitting. You know it's coming. He just showed you the fastball just to show he had it there, and you know it's coming. See it elevated and just find a way to Make put it contact. in play. Just yep. put it in play. That didn't feel the way in for McIntyre here. Curveball, strike three call. Looked like a pitch. It might have been a inside, but McIntyre's rung up. But that's the ball right there that you can hit. That one that stays in on a lefty isn't running away from you. It's staying in. You just throw your barrel at it. Looked like it might have been yeah. in a little bit. McIntyre not happy with the call as he goes down. So now it's left up to uh, Pintar, the freshman. And now they'll, we'll see the right-hander in for the Wolverines. 5-4 Cougars lead. We'll take a two-minute break. Be back with more Cougar baseball action on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's Brent Norton. Spencer Triplett brought into the ballgame. Triplett, this will be his fourth appearance. He's got one win, no losses. ERA of three even. He's thrown six innings, given up four hits, two runs. Five strikeouts. Opponents are only hitting 190 against the right-hander. Spencer Triplett is out of Mountain Crest High School up in Providence, Utah. He's a JC transfer out of South Mountain Community College down in the Phoenix area. And he will face uh, Andrew Pintar with runners at second and third base here in the bottom of the seventh inning. So Pintar steps in. He's got one hit. He's one for three today with an RBI. A couple of big guys on base here. They left two guys on base in the sixth. And the Cougars just looking for that big two-out base hit. Andrew Pintar steps in and the first pitch over for a strike. Owen won the count. Hayden Latham is on deck. And there's a curve ball over for call strike two. Good crowd on hand here on a cool, crisp March evening. 1,640 in attendance. 
at the home opener. Pintar checks the swing, but goes around on strikes for strike three call. So we are through seven. Cougars lead 5-4 over UVU on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Well, Easton Walker back on the hill here in the eighth inning for BYU. Cougars holding on to a 5-4 lead right now. They've left runners at second and third base the last couple of innings. Oh, that, that's tough. And that last play, the uh, strikeout of Pintar. Well, why uh, why Coach Pratt and Coach Little were so upset was the home plate umpire called him for the check swing, but Jim Perano at first base said he didn't go, which should be his call. So that's why the, there's confusion there, that the umpire that should call it said no, and Jeff said he went. It was a bad look for the umpires there. Ball fouled off by Polson. Well, Walker came in, struck out the side in the seventh. Looked very good. As the Cougars trying to hang on here, they've had plenty of opportunity, but just have been able, unable to come up with a big hit here in the last uh, two or three innings. Here's the 0-1. Hard hit, one hopper out to Watkins. Throw to first, a little bit high, but Deming went up. Made the catch, came down on the bag for the out. Ball hit hard there by Paulson. Probably the ball, hardest ball hits they've had since the first inning. Yeah, they had that double in the first inning. Ever since that, they really haven't hit anything hard. But that's why you get rid of it early. That way, in case you do make a bad throw, your first baseman can you know go up and get it and still have plenty of time. Drew Sims steps in. Hit by a pitch his last time up, and the first pitch is over for a strike. Let's go back to that mechanics. I mean, normally if there's ever a question on a home plate umpire's mind about a a check swing, he should go to first base. Exactly. If he thinks he sees it, he can make that call, correct? Correct. Toronto uh, probably, I mean, without being asked. Well, you you as the home plate umpire, you only make that call if you 100% see it. Right, that's right. You trust your partners out there. and. And Prano at first just thought that Jeff was pointing at him when in reality he was pointing at the batter to say that he thought he went. And yeah. So when you have one umpire says that no and the other one says yes, it's just not a good look. Here's the 0-2. That's outside. A ball and two strikes to Sims. No, everybody was confused. Yeah. I mean, the Wolverines were trying to get off the field and Pintar thought he was still yeah. alive at the plate. Tough break. And uh, Coach Trent Pratt not very happy coming out of the first base coaching box. Yeah, you don't see him get too animated very no. often. It's usually Coach Littlewood's job. But <laughs> Trent being at first has a great look of that and knows that he didn't go. Two balls, two strikes to Drew Sims. And the pitch. Strike three called. Sims goes down. Four strikeout recorded. By Easton Walker. That'll bring Marco to the plate. Well, are you tempted to stay with Walker in the ninth? If he well, you're going to go to Reed. You're going to go to Reed because you have your, yeah, your, your guy, guy on the back end, and he's out there in the pen right needs, now. Needs a little work probably. Yeah, and he, he's, he's your guy. He's your returning freshman All-American, a guy you trust. You're going to go to him. Marco steps in, first pitch over for a strike. The only reason I ask is because of, yeah. of I mean, Walker's uh, he struggling. He looks great. You know, yeah, he, I mean, he looks so good. He looks great out there. Swing and foul tipped 0-2. It's definitely a conversation that they're going to have as the coaching staff well, in the dugout. You know, there's two ways to look at it. Hey, get him out while things are good. Yeah. And he's been so dominating. Or or you got, like you said, McLaughlin, who's, yeah. who's uh, been incredible for you. Oh, and to the count, Walker from the windup and the pitch. All popped up back into the screen. But this is the Easton Walker that we want to see more often, yeah. right? He's out there, four or five guys he's faced, he's struck an out and just been dominating.
Walker Long look in at Valdez. Got the sign. And here's the pitch. Strike three called. Five strikeouts in two innings for Easton Walker. We're through seven and a half. Five, four Cougars continue to lead the Wolverines on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Brent Norton. Hayden Latham will lead it off for the Cougars. Oh, what a job by Easton Walker. Five strikeouts in two innings. Young man was dynamite tonight. As Latham steps in, Latham had an RBI single in the first, his only hit of the ball game, and there's a Ooh. pitch almost hit him again. He was hit by a pitch that was thrown behind him in the sixth. And that one, I'm not sure how it missed him. One ball and no strikes. Ball hammered down the third baseline, just foul. The Wolverines with uh, Spencer Triplett on the hill for his second inning of work. And Latham a little behind on that fastball at 88. Swings and misses in the count one and two. This kid, uh, MVP of the CSI, the, the uh, league up there. Yep, back-to-back back player of the year in the slack. Curveball got him. Got him back on his heels. That's the 13th strikeout by the Cougars here in this ball game. That'll bring up Austin Deming. He's been a real bright spot for the Cougars here tonight. He's got a couple of hits, two RBIs. He is two for four on the night. And Deming takes that pitch up high. He's, you know, you got, I mean, we've talked about it, but you got to get Deming, you got to get McIntyre, Latham. You got to get these guys with a little bit of experience swinging the bat like they can. Yep, there are guys. Popped up straight up in the air. Catcher never saw it. Now third, third baseman. baseman coming in, and Manson unable to make the play. Yeah, the catcher never quite found it, and the, the triplet was trying to point it out, and Matson came a long way from third and just outside his reach as it snow coned out of his glove. The thing is, you know, we're, we're so used to seeing at BYU the offensive side of the ball, mm-hmm. and, and this year it's just flipped. I mean, you look at some of these arms that we've got in yeah, this, it's been, this year. Yeah, it's definitely been flipped. We've, we've seen a couple of those freshmen come out tonight and just be dynamite. Curveball drops in for a strike. Got a good breaking ball, Triplet does. Yeah, he's a good pitcher, holding opponents to a 190 average. They've definitely upgraded their staff this year. Pitch to Deming, he swings and misses, goes down on strikes for out number two. Brings up uh, Cutter Clausen now for BYU. If you pitch it well, you're going to be in every game. Yep, that's the key. And at some point, Brent, the offense is going to get going. It's going to get going. Yeah, there's no doubt. Too, they're too talented not to. I think Pitch. right now it's a confidence thing. Pitch is down low, ball one. Some of these young hitters have never, ever felt this type of failure before. They've always been really good in high school and good in summer ball, and but they never also faced pitching like this every single day where it's just pressure, pressure, pressure with good breaking balls. Ball hit well by Clausen into right field for a base hit, his second hit of the ball game. So Cutter hitting over 400. He's got, uh, let's see, came in with 12 at bats. He's got five at bats, or four official at bats tonight. And they're going to pinch run for Clawson here. And we are going to have a pinch hitter, Brian Call. Looks like it's Hob Ni- Hob- Hobbs Nyberg. Oh, is it Nyberg? Well, Nyberg's running, but Call's going to bat. Okay, so yeah, Nyberg yep. is running. Call's hitting. 
after a couple of your uh, veterans. Uh, Nyberg swung the bat fairly well down yeah, in Mexico. Yeah, he did, yeah. Hobbs is an outfielder, and that uh, makes it a little more difficult. But uh, I expect him to uh, play a big role in the Cougars this year. And yep. Brian Call has proven that uh, he can hit the ball well. First pitch to call. Curveball drops in for a strike. Well, his first career start last year was against UVU, and he came in and the had home. three hits, a yeah. home run. Yeah, so see if a little more of that magic can happen right here. And Brian's been really good as a pinch hitter this year. Call a sophomore out of Mission Viejo. Pitches inside for a ball. Of course, Hobbs Nyberg out of St. George, Dixie High School. He wears number seven. Call wears number eight on the Cougar uniform. They are both sophomores. Pitch to call is over for a strike, one and two. Triplets, heavy, heavy breaking ball. He basically just shows the fastball to get back to the breaking ball. Does look like uh, there is a little bit of movement in the bullpen, so... I'm expecting McLaughlin to come in and pitch the night. Oh, there's the quick throw to first. Boy, very, very close. First baseman thought he had him. He, he rolled the ball back to the mound. Jim Perano made the made the call. I think uh, I think he tagged him up on the elbow and let the hand get in there before the ball beat him. Nyberg a little shorter lead now, and call swings and misses. So the Cougars with three strikeouts in the inning. And we'll go to the ninth. Cougars lead 5-4 over UVU on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. All right, back, uh, McLaughlin comes in for the Cougars, the closer for BYU. Outstanding last year, freshman All-American this year. Uh, in uh, seven innings pitched, has had uh, five appearances all in relief. Giving up nine hits, three runs. Two of those runs have earned. Uh, six uh, strikeouts for McLaughlin, and he comes on to Try to finish this one off, and uh, McMadson steps in, fouls the first pitch off for strike one. And Jaron Hall is now in right, right. field. Jaron will not be on the trip no. to Oklahoma State. Well, that's a tough deal. Yes, it is. Oh, football. Hit a grand slam down in New Mexico, and uh, real offensive force. There's a pitch over for a call strike. Good boy. Abe Valdez having a hard time getting the ball back to McLaughlin. McLaughlin really... Having to go up and make the catch. <laughs> Making him work hard out there. Trying to keep him warm, I guess. Madsen is 0 for 3 in the ball game. And that pitch is up high for ball one. Boy, you got to give this Cougar staff a lot of credit. They've held the Wolverines a lot to of zeros. just one hit. Just need one after more. The first inning. One more zero, right, Brent? It's one all, more zero. And you all pick that up your seventh win. Here's McLaughlin, and the one-two. Ball fouled off again, straight back. So they've got six, seven, and eight do up. Madsen, Aarons, and Barry are against Reed McLaughlin, freshman All-American last year. Two wins and a loss this year. Has yet to pick up his first save, but would get one with a, he's able to be successful here. Swing and a miss. And that is a strikeout of uh, McMadson. Yeah, 92 painted away right there. Swing and miss. Good pitch there by Reed. He just throws such a heavy baseball. They're not a very big kid. I'm telling you, this kid's got an electric arm. And, boy, he's just an elite strike thrower, and he hides it with his body. It's, it's tough for them to pick it up. Aaron's now steps in. He's one for two today. First pitch fouled off for strike one. It's the cardiac Cougs this year. Not the Batcats, none of that stuff. It's the cardiac Cougs. 
Every game is a close one. We've only had one game. It was that big time offensive performance against New Mexico in the doubleheader. And everything else has been within a couple of runs. The last UV who hit came in the second inning by Morales. And there's a there's a hit up the middle. Watkins bobbles, comes Good up, play. makes the throw. Good play. Boy, fantastic play by Watkins. Got it in his glove, popped out of his glove. Was able to pick it up. I'm not sure if it was a bare hand or not, but made the good throw for the second out. And the Cougars are one out away from a victory here. And what so I love about that is that Brock didn't rush himself. Even though he bobbled it, he still stayed composed, picked it up off the bobble, and made a perfect throw to first. I bobbled it, then back into the glove, and then uh, got it into his hand and made the throw. Two men out. Jake Berry steps in. Cougars looking to make uh, 50, 53 and 8 in home openers since 1960 here in Provo. And nine in a row against UVU, 14 out of the last 50. As Barry, who was 0 for 3 today, steps back in. Here's the 1 0 pitch from McLaughlin. That's over for a strike. Barry grounded out in the first, struck out in the fourth, and popped up in the sixth inning. Reed just has this confidence about him out there, Brent. You just know when he has the ball, he's going to get the job done. Ball and a strike. Pitch is just off the plate for ball two. Two and one. Ball fouled at the plate. Two and two. Well, here you are. Deuces right here. Two two and two. Two outs. Game on the line right here. Top of nine. Five four ball game. Go finish it right here, Reed. Barry steps back in. Nobody on. Two men out. And the pitch. Ball fouled straight back. Again, two balls and two strikes. But Laughlin looking for his first save of the year. And the pitch. Ball Ooh. fouled off again. Good slider right there. This one got a piece of Valdez. I think it also got a piece of the umpire coming off the bat. Well, when you're struggling offensively, boy, you got to call on the, the staff, and that's what the Cougars have done this year, and that's what they've done here tonight. It's kind of been a microcosm, it seems like, of yeah. the season up to this point. Just give yourself a chance. That's all you're asking. Here's the 2-2. Fastball, fly ball, hit pretty well. Center fielder going back. McIntyre, he's there, he's under, and makes the catch. And the Cougars win by a score of 5-4 to four here in their home opener. And the Cougars extend their streak over UVU to 9 in a row and 14 out of the last 15. We'll send it back for a timeout and be back with a player and head coach uh, Mike Littlewood right after this on your new skin, BYU Sports Network.